A stolen vehicle is recovered in Kimball, and the suspect is in custody. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, a stolen vehicle from Mitchell is recovered and the suspect is behind bars. Shortly after midnight, Kimball police saw the vehicle in question and attempted to make contact with the driver, later identified as 23-year-old Garrett Rust. The vehicle took off and a pursuit began before Rust crashed into a country road ditch. Rust is facing charges including theft by receiving stolen property, driving under the influence, and operating a motor vehicle to avoid arrest. He was booked into the Kimball County Jail and will be arraigned on the charges in the coming days. Well, for nearly four years, a man wanted for a child sexual assault case was on the lam, but this week, law enforcement officers were able to take him into custody without incident outside a Gehring residence. A U.S. Marshals Service Task Force out of Wisconsin had developed information last December that Osman Izaguire Zapeda was living in our area, and from that point forward, the Wyoming Fugitive Task Force and local enforcement from different law enforcement agencies had been conducting surveillance of the location where the fugitive was believed to be staying. He was wanted on charges of first-degree child sex assault, contact with a child under the age of 16, and attempted use or threat of force of violence. Isaguire Zapeda used multiple aliases and fraudulent identifications while evading capture by law enforcement since March of 2020. The suspect made an initial appearance on the extradition warrant Wednesday afternoon in Scottsbluff County Court. And local charges have been dismissed against a trio of women caught with more than a pound and a half of methamphetamine in Cheyenne County last fall. Brianna Big Crow, Monique Maryval, and Don Downty were all arrested on charges of possession of methamphetamine with intent to deliver. In October, the Nebraska State Patrol received a tip about Big Crow driving a vehicle trafficking drugs to the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. They were apprehended on Highway 385 in Gurley and booked into the jail in Sydney. Beginning last month and continuing into this month, their local cases were dismissed after prosecutors learned that the three women were being federally indicted on the charges. We'll have more news right after this. The journey of a dream becoming reality. When we're young, a dream develops into a passion. That passion continues to manifest and grows as you do. It becomes all you want to do and all you want to be. It gives you direction. It drives you. Then your dream has become a reality. When that dream is ready to be reality, Platte Valley Bank will be with you every step of the way. Welcome back. Three months ago, ground was broken for the Gehring Public School District's Early Childhood Education Center at Northfield Elementary. The building will create four additional pre-K classrooms at Northfield Elementary to meet the growing demand for early childhood education. Gehring High School's Construction Trades Program under the supervision of instructor Travis Gable, are the ones doing the bulk of the work for this project. Construction is coming along nicely with the trusses installed several weeks ago and plumbing added earlier this week. Jennifer Seibel, the district's director of communications and engagement, says they are on schedule and are eager to add these four preschool classrooms to the Northfield campus for the 2024-2025 school year. The building will be completed later this year, and enrollment is already open for pre-K registration. And Nebraska state lawmakers have advanced a bill aimed at helping mothers and their newborns. Lincoln Senator George Dungan III's priority bill for this session is for the creation of the Prenatal Plus program. Its purpose is to increase access to services available to at-risk, low-income mothers. 
The main thrust of the programs that are implemented is to address not just the medical side of things, but to ensure that when you have moms who have at-risk pregnancies, you're addressing the other factors that affect those pregnancies as well. That's the plus portion. So we're not just talking about prenatal vitamins. We're talking about providing services like mental health care, substance use disorder treatment, ensuring they have nutrition counseling, and specifically targeted case management to make sure that moms have someone who can tell them what other services are available. He says that Colorado already has a similar program in place, which provides us with 25 years of data that they've been able to see how those services work. After about one hour of debate yesterday, the bill was advanced to the next round of debate on a vote of 45 to zero. Are new windows from Renewal by Anderson a great investment? You're darn right they are. Did you know that for less than your cable bill or cell phone bill each month, you could have new windows from Renewal by Anderson right now? Do the math. Renewal by Anderson windows will likely cut your energy bills significantly. They will likely substantially increase the value of your home. They're a great investment. Please contact our team now and ask about our fantastic financing options with approved credit right now. Renewal by Anderson, a great investment? You're darn right. This is KNEB.TV weather from the KNEB Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. How about some snow showers across the area this evening? They'll end late tonight and then resume again tomorrow as we're going to see temps uh, much colder out there than where we have been. Yesterday's high only 40 after a morning low of 25. As far as uh, precip goes, nothing yesterday. 93 hundredths now for the month. That's an inch 30 for the year, double what we should have so far. And we're running a little over two inches above normal in snow here for the month and really close to normal for the year. As far as uh, temperatures go, another day below normal yesterday. And uh, we had no precip here, as we mentioned, but that's going to change as we've already had some rain and snow showers here across the region. We'll see more of those as we go through the evening. And again tomorrow, another round. Uh, likely going to fire up here across the region. Winds are going to remain fairly well in check. We shouldn't have a ton of wind to deal with. Maybe a few gusty breezes on Tuesday. Right now, temperatures are in the 30s here across the region. And winds out of the east-northeast, uh, somewhere in the vicinity of 5 to 15. Gusts at times up to 20 to 25 miles an hour. So that's driving temperatures down even into the single digits and teens in the northern panhandle. 20s and 30s in the southern panhandle. Out your door forecast for tomorrow. We're only going to be in the teens to start the day, only in the 20s in the afternoon, and we will see some off and on snow flurries. Snow showers in tonight, a break tomorrow in the morning, then another round of snow showers out here across the region tomorrow. And again, we'll see some light accumulations with snow uh, across the area when we add the two together. Low temperatures overnight in the teens. Highs tomorrow, only in the teens and 20s, so a much colder day coming our way tomorrow. Precip-wise, we do have, well, uh, a little bit of moisture coming for everybody. And as far as snowfall totals go, add the two together. We'll be in that uh, two to four inches in the valley. It looks like maybe a little more uh, in some portions of the area. So snow showers tonight and a low of 17. Tomorrow, more snow showers. Highs in the low to mid-20s. That's all we're going to be able to do. Quickly warming up those Saturday, and especially Sunday, Monday, look at Tuesday of next week, into the low 60s.
Now the latest from the Scotts Bluff Body and Paint Sports Desk. Scotts Bluff Body and Paint, you're driving home our reputation. Postseason time is here for the winter sports season. Plus, we do have another local signing. Today, tomorrow, and through late Saturday afternoon, it's the state wrestling tournament in Omaha for the boys and the girls. Early session today featuring Class B and Class C boys. Afternoon session for day one, Class A, Class D, and all girls brackets. We'll have state wrestling reports throughout all three days. Plus, you can find results on our website for state wrestling. Tonight, a big night for girls, Class C and D sub-district basketball with championship games scattered across the region. We're going to broadcast that C-112 final with 23-0 Bridgeport at 23-0 Sydney. Should be outstanding. KMOR 93-3 pregame will start at 545. Top seeds Baird, Morrill, and Layton also hosting sub-district championship games tonight. All winners and wild cards will play in district finals one week from tomorrow. Now, let's get to the signing from earlier this week as Garing senior Mitch Morvek inked to continue his career on the gridiron. He'll play football at Black Hill State in Spearfish, South Dakota. Um, I think it all kind of came down to um, the campus and the academics uh, as well as the football coaches. Um, they were always just really friendly and inviting to me. Um, ever since camp this summer, they, they really kind of showed me that they wanted me there. Uh, and I think that means a lot to me personally. Morvenk finished with over 100 tackles in his career at Gearing. He had three sacks this past year as a senior. He is planning on playing on the defensive side of the football to start at Black Hills, but he was versatile at Gearing as well, had 37 catches over the last three seasons. He credits his time in the Gearing program for helping him reach this point. Uh, I definitely think I grew a lot at Gearing, um, uh, especially in my high school career. Uh, I went from being a freshman who's kind of scared to play uh, varsity football, even JV football, to growing to love the game and just getting on uh, on whatever stage I could be. And Gearing head coach Danny O'Boyle, yeah, he knows a thing or two about playing football at the Division II level, and Coach O'Boyle says Morvenk has plenty of the necessary traits to be successful. Um, just his skill set overall. You know, he, he's got some character traits that, that fit multiple positions. Um, and it ultimately came down to being able to trust Mitch in those positions, you know, whereas it would come down to, okay, well, we can move maybe this person here, we can, we can put Mitch there, and we know what we're going to get out of Mitch every single time. And it's 110% effort, and um, whatever the job at hand is, it's going to be done, and it's going to be done aggressively and uh, in a good football mindset. So um, he just brings a lot of skills to the table that allows us allowed us to move him around to a lot of different spots. Gearing senior Mitch Morvenk signing earlier this week to continue his football career at Black Hill State in South Dakota. That's the latest today from right here at the Scotts Bluff Body and Paint Sports Desk. I'm Chris Cottrell. Morrill County Community Hospital and the behavioral health providers are here to help. Amber Dean specializes in mental health care, which includes medication and therapy across a person's lifespan. Melody Lysey, helps people deal with a wide range of behavioral problems, from depression and anxiety to child psychiatry. Our dedicated team is committed to you and our community every time. At Morrill County Community Hospital, Bridgeport, Nebraska. Exceptional care, right here at home. Let's take a look at your community calendar brought to you by Riverstone Bank.
The community calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. We're local and we love our community. Culture trumps everything else. In my years, I've never worked for a company that treats people the way this one does. It is my passion for agriculture that brought me here in the first place, but not only that, there's a huge uh, family-oriented atmosphere within the 21st century equipment. I love working for 21st. They found something in me that I didn't know in myself. An intern to where I'm at now is such a great opportunity, and that is what this company is about. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether you are just starting the business you have always imagined or looking to grow your existing one, we have a business loan to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. And finally tonight, Panhandle Public Health District has been selected by the Alzheimer's Association and the National Association of County and City Health Officials for the Healthy Brain Initiative. The initiative will allow PPHD to enhance its capacity to address brain health and dementia for the citizens of the Panhandle. PPHD's focus area will be early diagnosis and detection, including specific outcomes such as increasing public knowledge about brain health, risk factors for dementia, and benefits of early detection and diagnosis, as well as reducing the stigma and bias about cognitive decline. Deputy Director of Clinical Services Paul Lechnell says the organization wants communities to know that just because aging cannot be stopped, there is still something they can do about their cognitive health. Well, that is it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.